Engineered timber products, especially cross-laminated timber, also known as CRT, have an important role to play in the construction industry. With the production of cement said to be responsible for 8% of global carbon emissions, structural engineers have to look beyond steel and concrete far more often. At Integral Engineering we have extensive experience of using CLT across different sectors and from pure CLT projects to hybrid solutions. When designing with CLT there's a number of things that it's important to have in mind, a few of which I'm going to touch on today. CLT panels are solid wood panels that are formed by gluing together alternative layers of timber boards. And this creates a strong and dimensionally stable product that can span further than traditional cut timber elements. However, the strength of the panels differs in each of the different directions. This is crucial to consider when you're looking at connection design, as with all forms of timber engineering, the connection of elements can be the dictating factor when sizing elements. So getting it right early on can save a lot of redesign later on. Connections in CLT buildings are generally very simple with floor panels stacked directly on top of wall panels and then screwed together. This makes the structure very quick and easy to put up. However, timber is weak across its grain, so CLT panels actually have a very low strength out of the plane of the panels. For taller buildings, where the stress at these junctions is higher, this can be addressed in a number of ways using grouted pockets with a finger joint type arrangement or using screws to act as reinforcement. Timber should generally be kept dry and away from damp conditions at foundations. At such, it's typical to detail the base of CLT walls to sit 150mm above external ground levels and with an end grain sealant applied to the underside of the wall. When developing the base perimeter details, the level of tolerances associated with each of the different trades should be considered. Concrete is not cast the same high tolerances that CLTs are installed, so details should be developed that take this into account. Simple angle brackets are normally used to connect the wall panels to concrete foundations. However, large brackets can be required where the walls are acting as stability elements, and here the overturning forces mean that long strap brackets can be required and that then need to be coordinated with any applied finishes. The strength to weight ratio of CLT panels means that CLT structures are lighter than equivalent steel and concrete frames. As such, significant savings can be made in the foundation design for timber frame buildings. Where CLT is used for both the floors and the walls, the cellular form of construction further helps with foundation loadings as the walls spread the weight of the building over larger areas. This can unlock sites with difficult ground conditions or where you're building over existing infrastructure, or even if you're trying to reuse existing foundations. When using CLT, you can either go down the route of a pure CLT structure, where all the walls and floors are constructed of CLT, or if larger open spaces are required, you can adopt a hybrid form of construction. This is generally where the CLT is used for a floor plate spanning between a framed structure. The frame could be made from either glue lamb or steel beams and columns. If you're looking at a steel frame option, the CLT panels actually perform in a very similar way to traditional composite metal deck or precast planks. So similar large open floor plates can be achieved with all the same kind of benefits, but with a lighter overall structure. The panels are simply screwed into the steel frame, which is ideally carried out from above, but that's only if you can limit the thickness of the steel members below. So these are just a few of the things that you should consider if you're looking to use this, this very quick, sustainable and often beautiful form of construction.